That's right, we're here at the Hendrik Vidboy Building, the Harda Regional Council offices here in Marintal. Top of the morning to you and yours, and welcome to another State of the Region address. And this morning, we're in the Harda region in Marintal, to be specific, where Governor Salomon April will deliver his 2023 State of the Region address. Of course, the Harda region comprises of some, of some eight constituencies, uh, namely Khibion, Marintal Rural, Marintal Urban, uh, Rearboth Rural, Rearboth Urban East, as well as Rearboth Urban West, Aranos, and Davis. Those are the eight constituencies that make up this very broad uh, region of Namibia, of course, stretching from as far as our coast uh, to our border with Botswana and inhabiting some 80,000 people. Now, in a short while, we'll be chatting with a local analyst to hear in terms of what her expectations are um, for this morning's State of the Region address uh, as Governor Pearl readies to, of course, account for matters here in the region. But before that, we took to the streets of the Hardav region to hear what people expect um, as far as their needs are concerned and what development they would like to see. And this is what they had to say. We don't get here jobs. We still need of hair We can't find work here. For instance, I'm 50 years old and I can't find work. I'm struggling to find work, but I see there is work. What, what we want, especially for people in villages, man, they must uh, bring us maybe a proper shop like you say. Because the most, uh, most de demand in Hippon is the shops. You see, they only have mini shops and those things. So I wonder, uh, the governor, they must please bring maybe the family, they at least a you safe or like that, and do a proper uh, road, uh, like a tri road, a big. And the housing is also a problem in the Hibon village. Raising a, a big problem. So like if we are talking about Harda region, also there is a lot of problems, like job opportunities that the, the young people are not having, especially if we are talking about the youth. So there is a lot of uh, sufferings in, 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 in regard with, with, with uh, food security and, 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 and such. As a youngster in Calgary, we face a lot of lack of employment lack of education and lack of youth activities in Kalkrat. People nowadays don't want to hire everybody, especially the people in the, the managers of the ranks in departments rather hire their own family to work for them. So they don't really want to take everybody into company. So people are unemployed. There might be opportunities, but lack of businesses in Kalkrat, there is a lack of employment. And when it's regarding schools, it's I don't think kids are quite motivated to go to school. They just want to be in the streets with alcohol abuse and drug abuse. So from a youth perspective, Calgary is uh, it has a slow economic, and we don't have job opportunities here. I am happy with council's work. We had water, which was expensive, but now it was made easier for us and we are buying water now. It's only a challenge if we don't have money. We are buying both water and electricity. The problem that I have is about the kids that are not going to school and stays at the farm. Some children are dropping out of the school and stay in front of shops begging money from tourists and that is very shameful especially for us the elders and also touches me as a spiritual man one of the challenges we face here in the villages is the availability of water we were told there will be boreholes for us to use our own water since we cannot afford to pay num water but we have not received it yet secondly is electricity 32 years have gone past without electricity to the state. The water we get from here is provided by Nam Water. We would like to have our own drinking water. We are unable to pay Nam water as most of us here are elderly people and unemployed youngsters. 
We are not entirely happy with the development here in Malta here because there is a lot that is lacking. In Malta here we want the pep stores, a bank and an extension of the hospital we have. There are a lot of things that are lacking. We want those changes. The development here is moving backwards. Some sentiments echoing there from the various corners of the Hardab region as we of course took to the streets to hear what people's needs are and what they would like to hear from this morning's State of the Region address as Governor Solomon April takes to the podium for a fourth time since becoming a governor of the Hardab region in 2020 and when he's not at the altar he's overseeing the affairs of the Hardab region. This morning I'm joined by Sama Matias. She is the Sopo Party Youth League's uh, Secretary for Mobilization, Information and Publicity and she joins us this morning as we assess the state of affairs here in the Hardab region. Sama, a very good morning and uh, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you so much Tishishi and thank you for having me here today. Very big day indeed. Firstly, what does the state of the region mean to you um, as a youth, number one, but secondly, as somebody who is from the Hardab region, how important is this platform? Yeah. It is actually very important because it, get, it allows us the opportunity to find out what is going on within our region. Uh, we would like, as, as a youth, I would really be interested in knowing the, the pros and the cons of our region as well as uh, how much pro, uh, how much um, how much commitment and yes. how much development within our our region is happening absolutely yes thank and of you. course we're here to take stock this morning um, of the past financial year um, in terms of what our regional councils our local authorities have been up to as far as service delivery is concerned as per their mandate we listened to some of the sentiments there from the people of the Hardab region, um, a lot talking about unemployment. Uh, what is your take on this here? Uh, from a youth point of view, unemployment, when it comes to our civil, employee, civil job applications, yeah. um, our requirements, I think uh, because of the school dropouts that mm -hmm. they were just complaining about, yeah. um, the requirements when applying for a job mm -hmm. is actually... Uh, something that cannot be met by our youth members uh, in terms of elderly people looking at 35 plus looking for jobs yeah. uh, we have construction sites we have entrepreneurs that come into our region mm -hmm. but then they don't come with their own uh, they, they, they come with their own people whereby mm -hmm. we feel like mm -hmm. it should be our people that gets that access are recruited for yes that are being recruited mm -hmm. for yeah. these positions yes thank you. absolutely so we need to create jobs for the people uh, by the people yeah. yes exactly very much so when you look at you know perhaps some of the 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 the, 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 the sporadic you know uh, levels of development um, in the hard up region when you take for instance towns like marine Tower and Rehoboth, you know, which are more developed, you know, and you come to places like Davos or Khibion village, you know, etc. How can we ensure that development, you know, um, is spread across the board um, in a more equal manner? Yeah? Uh, what I have noticed within our region, especially when it comes to towns like these, uh, emphasizing mainly on Kalkrand maybe, uh, we have a lot of land that is privately owned. Yeah. If our government, for example, can, can, can buy these entities um, to ensure that our development comes because I think yeah. that is part of a setback for our region. Mm -hmm. um, a, a very big and beautiful example would be that our Tumas Park. Yeah. We have a school that is set up the electricity, water mm -hmm. supplies have been brought to this town. But because it is a privately owned yeah. land, our, our people are facing evictions over and over again, mm -hmm. yearly. So that is something that our government needs to look at before Absolutely. we talk about development. Absolutely. You also, of course, hold the position of you know, being the regional secretary uh, for, for information, publicity, and mobilization for the Youth League. Uh, just talk to us about some of your activities, perhaps, here in the region, as far as also making sure that you know, people are aware of their civic rights, but also their civic duties um, towards development. Um, and just generally, what do you make of, you know, um, the, the, the political landscape, you know, for even youth to participate in the decision-making process here. 
Uh, we have ensured that with our current, uh, if we look at our current uh, regional, co uh, regional congresses or conferences that we have been holding, mm -hmm. there was a lot of youth involvement in decision making yeah. when it comes to the future of our country and our region. Uh, youth positions have been availed. Mm -hmm. uh, I should thank the Director of Education that made sure that the platform has been established to ensure that our people get the preference of getting jobs within our region. Yes. Um, also, we have programs that are being funded by the government mm -hmm. that ensures that um, VTC centers have to be established within our regions. Yeah. There we talk about the K, K Kanahab uh, VTC center that needs to be developed and uh, established within our region. Uh, what needs to be done is to um, the pay, the pay, the pace at which the things need to be implemented. yes implemented needs to be a bit faster yeah. so that we can have and try and curve all these problems that we are facing. Very much. Yes. And, and I'm glad you, you're talking about you know vocational and technical education, um, which often you know Namibia has sort of come to the party now to realize the importance of it. Uh, but as you rightfully put it, this is a center that's still to be developed. Yes. yes, yes, yes. Um, but overall, generally, what do you make of uh, technical and vocational education um, in the region? Um, as an alternative to perhaps the mainstream manner of doing things and looking for work here? Um, we have one technical school which is currently in Rio World, and to see the vast and the high number of uh, youth and children yeah. you, you find kids that don't really know, um, they don't specialize in academics but then have the, 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 the skills of motor mechanics yes. you find woodworkers, carpenters yes. and so forth um, we, we, we need this uh, small establishments mm -hmm. like the markets whereby these kids get the opportunity to, to work with their hands. Yes. For example, we have a lot of uh, chairs and stuff lying around in the yeah. schools. It could be fixed. Yes, know, it yeah. could be fixed by mm -hmm. our children in our region if, if this has to be implemented. In, yeah. Yes. So I want you to paint us a picture of, you know, what the average young person goes through on a daily basis. Um, you come from Rehoboth, you know, and oftentimes, you know, we hear about the plights of young people, um, be it unemployment, be it drug abuse, uh, school dropouts, etc. Just from where you sit, you know, just how difficult um, is the plight of the hard up child um, in this contemporary today? Um, Rehoboth was... Uh part of the town that was established as one of the high drug abuse uh, hotspots. Um, I would like to comment and compliment our local authority councillors that actually, that actually established a subdivision of opening up our own uh, drug squad home in Riovot. What I think should be further established is a rehabilitation centre. I believe we are over 90,000 uh, inhabitants or so 80,000 yeah. and more. According to the last census. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully with the new census <laughs> yes, we'll get a yes, more clearer yes. picture. Yeah. Uh, but then <laughs> we don't have a rehabilitation centre. Mm. We don't know where to send our kids. Mm. Uh, when it comes to school dropouts, these kids are sitting there on a hungry stomach yeah. with parents that don't have an income. Yeah. And they, they need to understand and come out and say, uh uh do I really need to sit yeah. in a class from eight to one sure. just to go back to a hungry house? I would rather go get myself a fix. I would rather go out and go sell myself for money. Yeah. And uh, a rehab center, yeah. um, we have Teenagers Against Drugs and the Girl Child. All those programs that we had previously yeah. need to be implemented again. We need to go back to that so okay. that we can pre provide or produce future generational leaders. Very much indeed. And of course, we, we are hoping to hear, you know, uh, during today's State of the Region address, you know, efforts towards that, 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 um, that direction as well. But just talking about, you know, your expectations today as well. Um, not to preempt, you know, the governor, <laughs> the good Reverend April, but what would you like to hear, you know, from today's uh, State of the Region address, uh, not only as a young person, but as a person um, of the Hardab region. We know that housing um, is an issue of concern, as you rightfully put it. There's so much land here, but privately owned land. Uh, we've spoken about the agricultural component um, at the Hardab region, and the potential that the Hardab region has as far as agriculture is concerned, but somehow we still don't see that being fully utilized. Um, what would you like to hear from today, Soraya? 
apart from that, only just to mention that um, I would like to applaud the government for bringing in the Bold Together programs yes. as well as the Sheikh, Sheikh Diallas program. What I would want to hear is that the, there is some sort of a program that uh, a holistic approach that allows the beneficiaries to come back and plow back so that we can continue the program because it's a revolving yes. program. Also, I would uh, really like to hear regarding activities, art centers that are being created, yes. mini marks that are being put into different towns so that our people can start using their own hands and uh, putting effort into working. I would like to hear about laws that uh, when, when you live in a basic school ground, I can ensure that my child goes to school. Uh, the child knows that it's their responsibility to go to school, but laws that implement that are implemented to allow the parent to take responsibility to ensure that my child goes to school every day, to protect their child and ensure that the parent knows that before I allow my child to be, end up on the streets, I need to ensure that they go to school and become someone um, I would also like to know um, where there are opportunities, land being provided to the youth. We don't want to go back to say that, no, um, we are unemployed and the government does nothing. We want the land provided to us so that we can plant and start selling and looking into the market so that we can earn our own income. Absolutely. Yes. Of course, this will be Governor uh, April's uh, fourth state of the region address, you know, having come into the position in 2020. Just what do you make of, you know, um, Governor, or should I say Reverend April, um, as a leader, as a person? And of course, uh, what would you say, you know, has the state of the region been um, under his leadership for the past uh, four years or so? Yeah. Um, it is promising. Yeah. Uh, we have seen a lot of success. We have seen programs. Mm -hmm. uh, Governor or oh, reverend um, yeah. is actually someone that looks into the younger people <laughs> we have programs where you saw there were jackets being handed out there mm -hmm. were blankets being given to the yeah. elderly food yeah. supplies uh, we have seen uh, projects uh, programs that are being implemented mm -hmm. uh, so yeah it has been developing it has been good uh, he is disciplined he's very strict <laughs> yeah so we, we know that we can expect that results are showing. It might be slow, but it is, it is yeah. yes, it is there. Very much indeed. And of course, we'll be waiting with bated breath as Governor Pro readies to take to the podium an account for the state of affairs here in the Hardab region. It is the 2023 State of the Region address of the Hardab region to be delivered by, uh, that is, uh, Governor Reverend Solomon April in a few moments. I'm seated here with uh, Saima Matias. She's, of course, uh, from the Sober Party Youth League's uh, branches, uh, ranks, pardon me, uh, holding the position of, uh, that is, a Secretary for Information, Publicity and Mobilization as we gear towards heading into the auditorium as the governor will be, of course, delivering that statement in a short bit. Do stay with us as we bring you that in a very short while.
can't get your job. Who's going to use We can't find work here. For instance, I'm 50 years old and I can't find work. I'm struggling to find work, but I see there is work. What we want, especially for people in villages, man, they must uh, bring us maybe a proper shop like you say. Because the most uh, most de demand in Hippon is the shops. You see, they only have mini shops and those things. So I wonder uh, the governor, they must please bring maybe the family them at least a U safe or like that, and do a proper uh, road, uh, like a tri road a bit. And the housing is also a problem in Hippon village. Raising a, a big problem. So like if we are talking about hard up region, also there is a lot of problems like job opportunities that the, the young people are not having, especially if we are talking about the youth. So there is a lot of uh, sufferings in, 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 in regard with, with, with uh, food security and, 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 and such. As a youngster in Calgary, we face a lot of lack of employment, lack of education and lack of youth activities in Calgary. People nowadays don't want to hire everybody, especially the people in the, the managers of the ranks in departments rather hire their own family to work for them. So they don't really want to take everybody into company, so people are unemployed. There might be opportunities, but lack of businesses in Calgrant, there is a lack of employment. And when it's regarding schools, it's, I don't think kids are quite motivated to go to school. They just want to be in the streets with alcohol abuse and drug abuse. So from a youth perspective, Calgary is uh, it has a slow economic, and we don't have job opportunities yet. Is that English? Ne ne Calgary start a hard case. I I can't quite survive. I am happy with council's work. We had water, which was expensive, but now it was made easier for us, and we are buying water now. It's only a challenge if we don't have money. We are buying both water and electricity. The problem that I have is about the kids that are not going to school and stays at the farm. Some children are dropping out of the school and stay in front of shops, begging money from tourists, and that is very shameful especially for us, the elders, and also touches me as a spiritual man. One of the challenges we face here in the villages is the availability of water. We were told there will be boreholes for us to use our own water since we cannot afford to pay Nam water, but we have not received it yet. Secondly is electricity. 32 years have gone past without electricity to this date. The water we get from here is provided by Nam Water. We would like to have our own drinking water. We are unable to pay Nam Water as most of us here are elderly people and unemployed youngsters. We are not entirely happy with the development here in Maltehir because there is a lot that is lacking. In Maltehir we want the pep stores, a bank and an extension of the hospital we have. There are a lot of things that are lacking. We want those changes. The development here is moving backwards. Good morning, Namibians. Good morning, inhabitants of this wonderful region, Hartab. Honorable Gerson Daniel Francois Donsap, Chairperson of the Hartab Regional Council. Honorable Regional Councillors present, Your Worship Sherin Kok, the Mayor of Marindal Municipality, and all local authority councillors present, the Acting Chief Regional Officer. 
the regional commander of the Namibian police, officer in charge of hardtop correctional facilities, all management cadres and representatives from all line ministries, chief executive officer of all local authorities, distinguished traditional leaders, inhabitants of the Great Hardtop region, members of the media, veterans of the liberation struggle, viewers and listeners of different media platforms, ladies and gentlemen. Accountability makes institutions and organizations great, somebody said. And great organizations and institutions become unstoppable. Therefore, we are here to account to you about what we have been doing in the financial year under review. I derived, I derived my authority to do this job from the Constitution of the Republic of Namibia, Article 110A, subsections 5 and 6. But before I do that, let me join the other Namibians to celebrate the visionary leadership of His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Namibia, Dr. H. G. Genko, for upholding peace, harmony, and pursuing prosperity for all, most significantly for his encouragement for the Namibians to use this year as the year of revival. Honorable Chairperson, sir, fellow Namibians and inhabitants of the Hartab region, the desires and expectations of people of Hartab is that the regional governance and this narrative report should reflect arrangements that were made by which our society and, and inhabitants encountered tangible developments and enhancement of quality of life, as well as rejoice together the public and private customer focus service delivery. This state of region address for the financial year 2022-23 encompasses principles of good governance as promoted in this region, namely transparency, accountability, democratic participation, inclusivity, fight against corruption, and creation of opportunities for young people. The mandate of the Regional Council remains to implement specific programs, projects, and activities that include planning, surveying, land servicing, and distribution of settlement areas, and promotion of rural infrastructural development, which are aimed at improving service delivery in the rural areas. In addition, land ministries manage and implement development funds allocated to the region. Notably, I acknowledge the diverse political landscape in the region. However, it should be understood that when it comes to issues of socioeconomic development and upliftment of citizens' livelihood, we should continue to hold hands, combine intellects, and pull in the same direction for development and growth to take place. On that note, I'd like to pose a little bit, and I would like to commend you, Honorable Chairperson, on the regional councillors for the spirit in which you continuously foster for unity of purpose, coherence, and collaboration in the region. Can you please put your hands together for the chairperson? Because you must stop that machine there. You cannot be speaking about unity if you yourself are not a unifier. Thank you, chairperson. Honorable chairperson, honorable regional councillors, honorable local authority councillors, heads of line ministries, in the region. Before I embark upon reports per economic sector, I'd like to quickly highlight on prevailing pressing issues in this region. First of it is the youth unemployment. In this context, Namibia defined the youth as a person between age 15 to 35. This group is undisputably our asset for the future. There have been collective employment creation opportunities in the region in the following sectors to put a dent to unemployment with the youth. 117 permanent jobs at entry level in the Directorate of Education, Arts and Culture. Other sectors such as Marindal Municipality, 200 jobs. 
and Rebov Town Council 330 jobs. MVA also sponsored six young students from Mariendal to pursue an emergency medical care course at NAST. Reopening of Farmers Meat Market, which saw 110 persons getting jobs, with the assistance of the Office of the Governor in conjunction with ONL Group and Hartleaf, the Farmers Meat Market was reopened in October 2022. Farmers Meat Market is currently the biggest sheep apatoa operation in Namibia and the only exporter of the highest quality sheep meat from Namibia to Norway. <coughs> These efforts have been supplemented by recruitment drives at national level, for example, in the police, correctional services, and Namibia Defense Force. The second pressing issue is about drought. Climate change continues to affect our country and increase risk of natural disasters emanating from climate-related cyclones, storms, torrential rains, and drought in our region. Of course, there is a looming drought due to lack of rainfall in the past rainy season. Office of the Prime Minister announced the commencement of drought assessment in the country, including, including Hardab region, which is a welcome news. The third pressing matter or issue, opportunities for young people. The construction of Cape Panaha Vocational Training Center is completed and the site handed back to the government. The center will be operational very soon with a capacity to train 300 students per annum. I think that also deserves a round of applause. The center can accommodate 160 students in the hostel. This facility will afford the region an opportunity to capacitate the youth with skills and knowledge for the job market. The youth are hereby encouraged to attend other short courses and crash trainings offered by different agencies of the government, NGOs, and corporate institutions in order to obtain important hand skills and technology in agriculture, entrepreneurship, and cultural tourism. The fourth one is about unity, pressing issue. Our region spans an impressively diverse population made up of different cultural backgrounds. Diversity allows us to recognize our differences as good thing. Celebrating our different abilities backgrounds and beliefs is essential in understanding the world around us. Therefore, I call upon the inhabitants of Hartab region to be tolerant, loving, and hospitable to different ethnicities, religions, and languages coming to the region for the purpose of diversity. Working together in a group that celebrates diversity is an invaluable experience United we stand, and divided we shall definitely fall. <laughs> land distribution is the other pressing issue. Land reform had land redistribution is widely regarded as a prerequisite for meaningful rural development according to the report submitted by land reform under the Ministry of Agriculture, Water and Land Reform. There are 93 resettlement farms in the region and 227 farming units. Two farms, Farm Gurus number 6, portion 1, and Farm Mirbon number Mirbom, number 401 were acquired in the financial year under review for resettlement purposes. Two beneficiaries were resettled at the Farm Gurus number 6, portion 1, and the remaining extension, extension of Farm Swats Cooper, number 79, unit B, portion 2. Additionally, 36 customary land rights were registered under this year that is under review. I shall now, Mr. Chairperson, say report on the regional and local authorities' activities as second and third tiers of the government. The Hartab Regional Council approved a budget of 
and 348,000 Namibian dollars, whereby 74 million and 26,579 Namibian dollars were for the operational budget and 9,751,700 Namibian dollars was received for the development budget. Allow me to share with you some achievements of the Regional Council for the past financial year. <coughs> a water treatment plant was completed in Wahana settlement to the value of 1.4 million and 150 prepaid water meters were installed. It is worth noting that the water quality in the settlement has improved drastically. The construction of the water and sewerage services, phase seven at the tune of 643,169 in Clean Up Settlement was successfully completed during the year under review. The settlement has full water and sewer reticulation lines as well as up to standard and good carrying capacity oxidation ponds. An amount of 26470 was spent on assisting families to get coffins for venerable families to give them a dignified burial for their loved ones. Is that not worth a round of applause? The Regional Council spent 148964 to install wireless internet connectivity and advance the use of technology at its regional headquarters here in Marintal. <laughs> Planning and surveying of land is currently ongoing for Wakanas and Slip Settlement, respectively, to fast-track land delivery process in settlement areas. As part of its local economic development key strategies, the Hartab Regional Council continuously provides technical support to various community-based organizations in the region. Dana Felt Leather Cooperative 12 community members receive basic leather production skills as well as basic business management skills costing about 25,000 Namibian dollars. Daveb Green Scheme, 25 community members receive basic crop production, training, business management training, and had exposure visits to other green schemes in the region to share experiences at a cost of 30,000 Namibian dollars. Women in business, 12 women in business in Hartab, two representatives from the following areas, Rehapov, Khibion, Schlepp, Malde here and four from Mariendal received advanced needlework training and businesses management skill worth 35,000 offered by Women Action Development. <laughs> One of the strategic focus of impact mitigation response is to strengthen and, and improve coping mechanisms for individuals and households affected by HIV and AIDS, constituency AIDS coordinating committee, gardening committee, com community projects for sleep and stumbly to identify to get assistance from World Food Program, the project aimed at ensuring food security and nutrition for households with vulnerable persons to improve livelihood. 20 vegetable parcels consisting of spinach, sweet corn, cabbage, and beans were distributed to people living with HIV in SLEP. The project has about 75 beneficiaries. They think they must get a hand there some way. <laughs> Honorable Chairperson, and Sir Honorable Dongsap, let's now look at our capital in the region, Marintal Municipality. They report that successfully they have completed the following projects. Number one, construction of the water articulation for Embalam Extension 4 to provide water to the 100 Sackdwellers Federation plots at a cost of 1.4 million and funded by the Ministry of Urban and Rural Development. 
construction of water and sewer regulation in the informal settlement, which includes 14 prepaid water stains and 14 fire hydrants at a cost of 1.5 million funded by GIZ, construction of an ECT center in Takarania, informal settlement at a cost of 1.6 million funded by Anglo-American Namibian Foundation, installation of prepaid water meters and replacing the conventional water meters at a cost of 950,000 funded by their own budget, establishment of emergency and medical response center at a cost of 1.4 million. Additionally, the following projects are ongoing. But let's first put hands together for those that were achieved. I'm still seeing that not everybody's putting hands together. Are you jealous of Marinda's achievements? Thank you so much. It's already cold, so we need to clap so we can stay warm. Ne? Upgrading of the Northern Indrens Road, industrial road, 1.7 kilometers from gravel to interlock road at a cost of 3.3 million funded by Road Fund Administration. One kilometer, kilometer of has already been completed. The Nama language is coming through English, ne? Construction of toilets in the informal settlement at the tune of 400,000. Provision of water reticulation network in the informal settlements at a value of 750,000. Provision of 60 low-cost housing worth 2.4 million. 10, development of Impelheim extension five under the flexible land turner system to accommodate 60 houses. Let's give them a warm, warm round of applause. We are now getting closer to Bintuk, ne? Rib of Town Council. Rib of Town Council is reporting the following achievements. About housing, 198 houses were provided to beneficiaries in various suburbs. 120 houses construction is completed and 78 are still under construction. Whilst 526 airmen were allocated, 346 of those are in Bahnhof Extension 2 and 3, and 180 in Bahnhof Extension 4. Additionally, 3,700 plots were upgraded in the informal settlement. 2,200 of those are in Extension 3 and 6, Block H and and it an extension block E, 1,500, Burgers Hook and Fall Straits Flagter, 1,300 plots have been availed to private developers to develop housing, 163 to Hillside Development, 182 to Best Rich Development, 723 to Nanzunga Property, and 232 Astra Lucus development. Shall we put hands together for this? It's a welcome fast tracking of land delivery to our people. The construction of power line to supply electricity to the pump station in Block H to the value of 1.6 million has been completed. Whilst the following projects are still happening, construction of sewer network for extension one and two, Riepov valued at 2.9 million. Construction of fire station to the value of 4.9 million. And design and servicing of own water storage boreholes to supply block E valued at 1 million. All of this is what Riepov Town Council has delivered. Shall we put our hands together for that? Thank you so much. Allow me now to get to Arnos Town Council, our other town in the Hardab region. The council is reporting that 56 airmen were allocated to SEC Dwellers Federation and has been serviced and connected to water pipelines. The zoning for the residential plots was done. 45 houses were constructed under the SEC Dwellers program in the year under review. 620 airmen in 
a partially service exchange with water and electricity, but still do not have sewerage system will also achieve. Shall we put our hands together for Aronos? <laughs> Let's now get to the historical town, Khibuan Village Council. The Khibuan Village Council reported that 20 houses have been constructed under the Sagdwalas Federation at a value of 700,000 Namibian dollars. An amount of 1.2 million was budgeted for the electrification of Cornelius Isaac and Lucas Stefanes sections in Khibion. The bucket system in Khibion, regrettably so, is still in use. However, there are noticeable efforts to alleviate it completely, completely, for example, a contractor has been appointed for the construction of 35 conservancy tanks and or drains to the tune of 312,000 Namibian dollars. As we speak, the project has been finalized and therefore there is a reduction in the bucket system in Hebron. I think they need a round of applause. And we should, we should encourage them to super prioritize that part because we cannot afford to carry buckets in a free Namibia. That cannot be. <laughs> Construction of the sewer radicalization project to the value of two million is in progress. More than 70 households have been connected to the system. These funds were availed by the Ministry of Agriculture, Water and Land Reform under the Namibia Water Sector Program with African Development Bank. Further, Road Fund Administration provided finances to the tune of 1.5 million to Hebron Village Council to upgrade the gravel road entering into the town to a bitumen standard. I think that's a proper thing for hands. Thank you so much. Now, allow me to go to Goha's Village Council. Mr. Cheverson, sir, the council is extending the electricity network at a cost of 50035 for more households to have access to electricity. Let me move now to Kalkran Village Council. Are those people not getting a hand, the Goha's people? <laughs> Kalkran Village Council has the following ongoing projects. Installation of 190 prepaid water meters to the value of 600,000 Namibian dollars. Stand pipes for prepaid water meters valued at 30,000. And road upgrade with interlocking finance by road fund administration to the value of 800,000. I believe they also deserve a round of applause. <laughs> Allow me to move to Maltehir Village Council. They are reporting that 100 ervan have been allocated to the inhabitants through flexible land tenure scheme. Sacked Dwellers Federation water articulation to the value of 1.4 million. Maltehir extension to water articulation to the value of 1.3 million. Maltehir extension to electrical, electrical network to the value of 1.3 million, formalization of the Blackie's Door informal settlement with 530 Ervin. Let's give these people a round of applause. <laughs> there is progress. Thank you so much. Stambrit Village Council. Roots Development as a private sector player constructed 20 houses in Stambrit and two. 177 ervan were approved and surveyed by the council. They deserve a hand of applause. <laughs> I am now moving to the issues, Mr. Cheberson, sir, of safety and security in the region. The Namibian police of Hardab region have got 13 police stations in the region. A total of 4,730 4, cases were reported, with the highest 2,378 cases being reported in Riebov and lowest number of cases in Sesrim, which are eight cases. Riebov will have to do 
a lot to keep that number down to below zero next time. Generally, crime in the region has increased by 4.6 compared to the 2021-2022 financial year. The most common crimes committed in Hartab region are murder, 24 cases, rape, 48 cases, culpable homicide, 12 cases. There's a decrease in suicidal or unnatural deaths which are at 44 cases as we speak. Possession or dealing in prohibited drugs or substances, 100 cases, and stock theft at 292 cases. There is a drastic decrease in the number of rape cases as compared to 2021-2022 financial year at which we had 380 cases. Now is reported to be 48 cases. Thank you, gentlemen of Hartab region, for coming to your senses. <laughs> we encourage you to please refrain. We don't want the 48 also next year, ne? Yeah. Regrettably so, we are reporting an increase in the value of drugs confiscated, which amounts to 4.7 million, imagine, in Hartab region, compared to previous year, which were at 402,740. The total value of drugs confiscated amounted to 4.7 million. Let's look at the breakdown of that amount. 31,599 kilograms of cannabis were with the value of 336,440 Namibian dollars. 40.487 kilograms of skunk valued at 3.8 million. 4.638 full mantrax tablets worth the value, street value of 573,430 Namibian dollars. And 37 units of crack cocaine to the value of 5,000. At this juncture, ladies and gentlemen, Hartabians, I'd like to extend a stern caution that the full wrath of the law will be applied if you do not desist immediately with this wrong attitude and behaviors and culture in this region. Hartab region hosts tourists from around the globe and farmers who are contributing immensely to the local economy, hence inhabitants should shy away from barbaric behaviors of rape, gender-based violence, theft, and possession of dealing in dangerous drugs and substances. You must stop it forthwith. The contributing factors to these crimes remains alcohol, and drug abuse, as well as escalating poverty caused by unemployment. Honorable Chairperson, Sir Mr. Delsap, members of the Regional Council, inhabitants of the Adab region, the broader Namibian nation, I am now getting to the economic engine of Adab region, namely agriculture. The Hartab region is dominated by commercial farmland, which makes up 75% of the total area of the region. The remainder is taken up by the Namib Nokluf National Park, 15%, and communal farmland, 10%. In terms of agriculture, the region has a potential to be an agricultural hub, a food basket of Namibia. However, due to the re recent droughts outbreak and the COVID-19 pandemic, farmers felt the immense pressure on livestock and crop production. Let me use this platform to demand that the ministry, demand not ask, that the Ministry of Agriculture, Water and Land Reform must restore the trainings at Tumas Arad Zone Agriculture College as it used to be. We are demanding, we are not asking to ensure increased production, 
the Ministry of Agriculture, Water and Land Reform has developed the Harambi Comprehensively Coordinated and Integrated Agriculture Development Program. This program aims to facilitate market access to small and medium-scale agricultural producers and agro-processors as a means of stimulating sustainable agricultural production and productivity. The following schemes under that long name, HACSIDEP, are implementing the following in the region. National horticulture value chain started during the 2019-20 financial year, and the date it is and to date it is valued at 2.7 million, benefiting 218 farmers who have subsidized inputs such as seeds, including lucerne. Eight pasture seeds, fertilizers, pesticides, and machinery and equipment. The allocation for the year under review was 600,000 Namibian dollars. I think the ministry must get a round of applause. <laughs> Poultry value chain development scheme commenced in 2020 21 financial year, to date, valued at 957,000, benefiting 166 farmers with subsidized inputs such as production, stock, materials and equipment, veterinary, medicines, and feed. Small stock distribution and development in communal areas is a revolving scheme where beneficiaries are to revolve 20 years to the next beneficiary. Currently, a total of 220 years are ready to be revolved to new beneficiaries, the initial cost of the scheme was valued at one million. Are they not deserving a hand? <laughs> the Directorate of Agriculture, Production, Extension, and Engineering conducted farm visits, exposure visits, and trainings. Over 4,500 farmers, including schools, hostels, hospices, and individual gardeners received advisory and also training services during the period under review. And this engineering directorate of the ministry has by itself registered so far three cooperatives in this region. I believe they deserve a hand of them. Them, and that's not warm enough, a warm one. Because I can see with that some job creation, that's why I want you to put it a little bit warmer. Developmental partners such as the World Food Program, Food and Agriculture Organization, UNDP, BBB, Rice Agribank, Rice Namibia, Lutheran Church, and GIZ have also contributed to the food security in the region through trainings, provision of farming implements, and mentorship. Private sector religious coming on board. I like it. Thank you so much. The Farmer Field School, which was supported by FAO, has trained 40 women in different concepts of horticulture production for a period of four months. This initiative will be rolled out throughout the region. <laughs> women are empowered. The Ministry of Implementing Conservation Agriculture, this approach is to manage agro-ecosystem for improved and sustained productivity and food security while preserving and enhancing the resource base and the environment. The region has 265 farmers practicing one of the three principles of conservation agriculture, smart agriculture. The Directorate of Water Supply and Sanitation Coordination currently Harta maintains a total of 468 water points in the region of which 39 water points are having bad quality water. Therefore, water was supplied by a tanker 134 times to the salt block area and other places on an emergency basis.
During the year under review, four, four short water pipelines were constructed at Blanganis, Post 2 and 5, August Dam and Coat Dry. A total of 287 repairs on engines, solar pumps, pipelines, and windmills were carried out during the period under review. Honorable Chairperson and members, I believe they must get a round of applause here. <laughs> we now move to the Director of, of Directorate of Forestry. An amount of 26,000 Namibian dollars were, were collected in revenue through forestry permits issued and seedlings sales. A total of 2,358 forestry permits were issued by business entities in the region to harvest firewood for both domestic use and charcoal production. As a result, the business entities harvested 13,519 tons of firewood and produced 5,095 tons of charcoal for commercial and domestic use. A large part of the charcoal is exported to South Africa, which remains the main market for charcoal export. Are you not spending a bit of money? There? I think they deserve a better round of applause. The directorate also produced 8,948 seedlings and sold 7,455 seedlings to the public to promote tree planting. 1,005 seedlings were donated to government institutions and church organizations to encourage tree planting. Forestry, in collaboration with HRC, that is now the Harta Regional Council, trained seven communities on firefighting in seven constituencies, 120 firefighters in all eight constituencies in the region, and 17 fire protection campaigns were carried out during the forestry resource inspections. Subsequently, 20 firefighting machines and several firefighting equipment and tools were availed and distributed in the region. <laughs> Altogether, 22 incidences of fire outbreaks were reported in the region, and the most devastating one was at the Tsumes farm, which claimed lives and properties. Shall we become a bit quiet there, silence? Thank you. I would like to register my appreciation to the farmers, in particular the Farmers without extinguishing fire equipment who reacted positively, and also really the Mariental municipality and the Riebov Town Council for coming through to assist us to, to kill these fires. <laughs> Two towns in our region killing fires, and those fires were really devastating, and that is the round of applause they are deserving. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now I'm getting to the Ministry of Environment and Tourism in this region. Tourism is the fastest growing economic sector in the region and employs many people from across the country. Total revenue of 701,720 was collected during the year under review, 637,530 for pack entry permits, 45,650 hunting and harvesting permits, and 18,540 from fines for hunting without permit. Although 419 hunting permits were issued, seven cases of hunting without a permit and one case of illegal capture and transporting of specially protected game without a permit was recorded and culprits were fined. They must be fined. Justice must be applied. In the year under review, a total of 26 reports related to human wildlife conflict 11 and livestock, 15 
were also reported, maybe a snake of the people or a jackal of the people. I don't know exactly what happened here. But some conflict was happening there because we don't have rhinos and other elements here, isn't it? So it should be a snake versus something or something. Let's clap hands for that part that we have survived. <laughs> we have survived that attack, ne? that conflict. Hardtop Game Park visitors increased gradually from 14,717 to 22,299 in the year under review. Both local, domestic, and international fascination with Hardtop Game Park were noticed, whereby 11,918 were Namibians. Namibians. <laughs> 2,048 from Sadek countries, Africa. I'm waiting for a hand. <laughs> and 8,359 from international world. <laughs> On that note, Mr. Chairperson, say, I would like to invite all travelers inside and or from outside the region and or the country to continue to enjoy the beautiful sceneries and spectacular landscapes in Harta region at that game park. <laughs> Allow me now to zoom into private sector initiatives with particular emphasis on hospitality and tourism. The Nama Brand and Volver Dance Foundation, an initiative called Rural Revive, was started in Malde here and was officially inaugurated on 21st January 2023. The Rural Revive program focuses on the following aspects. Laundry activities in Malde here, horticulture training center in Malde here, a barn where locals will sell the agricultural produce after having received training at the horticulture center happening in Malde here. Mm. A desert runner service that would transport laundry and agricultural products to or from Malde here to the lodges in the vicinity twice a week in Malde here. Finally, Rural Revive also envisages to introduce a recycling program for Malde here. Malde here! Malde is in the economy. The Rural Revive program is co funded by the Social Security Commission of Namibia to the tune of 2.7 million. And the Volver Dance Foundation to the tune of 2.8 million. And Julius Bayer Foundation, 6.2 million. And therefore, if you count these ones together, the total investment is at 11.7 million. The next private sector player in that sector is Bull Sport Lodge in collaboration with the No Kluft Foundation in the Daveb constituency, established an eight relationship with the Nabasib Primary School in Rehoboth Rural <laughs> Constituency, amounting to 1.1 million since 2005. <laughs> Private sector coming through. About 1,000 learners were offered training in environmental education in the year under review by the Nadet Training Center in the Namib Rand Reserve, Daveb, Malde here. <laughs> the Little Bucks Community Project initiated a meal for two project in Rit Och Riebov, rural constituency, with assistance of the great sources play Namib Landscape. The Talani Africa Group supported the community schools 
work in painting of the park injury gates and also assist the Sestrim clinic with maintenance, painting, tiling, as well as the safety and security aspects. Daveb constituency. Another sector, private sector player, Walter Friede Lodge is engaged in supporting specifically the Ministry of Health, director was here, and the Namibian police with free accommodation and meals during mobile clinics, reach outs, and regional trainings that are happening in Daveb. I'm going to move to Daveb myself, eh? Fisheries and marine resources, we are not getting back to the ministry. The Hartab Inland Aquaculture Center is responsible for the promotion of aquaculture and sustainable management of inland fisheries resources. During the year under review, 445 tons of tilapia fish was harvested from the aquaculture project in the region while he had produced 47,335 tilapia fingerlings for distribution to small-scale fish farmers in the south and central regions. About 6,470 of these fingerlings were distributed to nine small-scale fish farmers in Hartab region. We are becoming a fish-consuming region. Therefore, residents are encouraged to start with integrated aquaculture projects in the region. They also successfully registered 14 small-scale fish farmers in Hartab region during the period under review. Nine farmers received training to get an insight to fish farming and fish husbandry. In addition, seven site assessments were conducted to determine the feasibility of proposed small-scale aquaculture projects. We are eating fish in this region very soon. Eh? Health and social services, we need to be healthy in order to get all these things. Honorable Chairperson, sir, members of the Regional Council, local authority councillors present, ladies and gentlemen, let's now move into the health matters in the region. The following has been achieved in health programs. COVID-19 vaccination rate the vaccination rate for first doses stand at 49%, while second doses are recorded to be at 27%. We still encourage the community members to go for COVID-19 vaccination and at their nearest health facility to get that vaccination. It's very imperative. Measles and rubella coverage stands at 73%, and this can greatly be attributed to the integrated maternal and child health vaccination activities that are happening in the region. Anti-retroviral therapy coverage is at 97% with clients that are put on treatment. TB treatment success rate is 88% still below the required coverage. This one for the men now. Voluntary medical male circumcision, that small cut, smart cut, that small smart cut for health reasons. 1,038 clients went for the procedure as at 9th of, 9th of December 2022. Only 1,038. I'm encouraging more men to go in order they, for them to get that small, painless smart cut. Painless. Welfare organizations, we've got 14 of those, and they have been assisted with registration during the year under review by the ministry, the directorate. 
Mr. Chairperson say, we also look at social services conducted in line with outreach activities. Integrated community outreach was conducted by a multi-sectoral team consisting of Ministry of Health, Ministry of Information, Ministry of Home Affairs, Ministry of Gender, and Hartab Regional Council. During this campaign, health services, including but not limited to childhood vaccination, COVID-19 vaccination, as well as provision of supplements was offered just to mention but a few. Mass TB screening was conducted in all three districts of the region. A total of 89 cases were confirmed with TB and 88 with, have started with treatment. GRACE project conducted, conducted an outreach program to Aronos during August 2022 as part of their social responsibility. The outreach was conducted by a multidisciplinary team of doctors, dentists, and pharmacists. For 764 clients were seen by 65 volunteers. We are truly grateful to partners such as the Grace Project as their effort supplements the ministry's vision of bringing services closer to the people. Are they not deserving a hand of applause? Women Action for Development commemorated in Aronos Town with pre-event activities including HIV counseling and testing, TB and cancer screening, as well as that smart cut. It is worth to note that during the week preceding the WAD commemoration event, 30 men in Aronos alone were also circumcised. I'm happy to inform you that a prefabricated structure, because of challenges of space to attend to patients, were added to Kalkran Clinic to expand that space. Minor renovations have been done at the Mariendal District Hospital at the inpatient wards which includes maternity, male, female, and patriotic with the generous support of the Turkish Cooperation and Coordination Agency, TICA, in collaboration with the Office of the Governor of Hartab Region, Salomon Mentos April. A regional health conference, first of its kind, in the country was held under the theme promoting and improving healthy lifestyle through inspiring health professionals that leads to a healthy, literate community. A total number of 6,348 participants attended the conference physically and virtually. I wish to then now step over to the very challenging area, but very important and seminal one, and that is the education in Hartab region. Currently enrolled in schools in Hartab region are learners to the tune of 542. From last year's enrollment, which was 28,009, what has added this year, and that is something first of its kind in Hartab region. 47 kids who dropped out of school for various reasons and were living and working in the streets, commonly known as street kids. 47 were taken from the streets and reintegrated back into schools. For the past three years, the number of learners qualifying, qualifying for AS improved from a mere 7.8% in 2020 to 13.8% in 2021 to 15.6% in 2022. 
We are gradually going up, eh? Curriculum was extended at the following schools to enhance access to secondary education. Things are happening in Hartab region. Mariental Secondary School started offering grade 8 and 9. Embleham Senior Secondary started offering grade 10 and 11. Stambri Combined School in Jacob Soul Primary School were amalgamated. For that reason, now they are able to offer grades from four to nine. They deserve a hand of approval. <laughs> we mean business in education in Hardab region. We are anticipating a very colorful pass at the end of the year. The following basic education infrastructures were improved. Renovation of ablution facilities at Pioneer Secondary School to the value of 1.1 million. Construction of two classrooms at Embleheim Secondary School at St and Stambridge Combined School to the value of 1.4 million. Construction of four classrooms and a storeroom at Groen Dry Primary School to the value of 1.2 million. We need to put our hands together for MTC, <laughs> MTC as well as six showers and toilets by the ministry to the tune of 235,000 Namibian dollars still at Grundrai Primary School. <laughs> Furthermore, to enhance organizational performance, 9,800 9, learners in the 41 primary schools are benefiting from the Namibia School Feeding Program. 9,800 kids are guaranteed of a meal per day whilst they are at school. Thank you, government. M and K Hertz Secondary School repaired a total of 1,800 chairs and 399 desks and continue to refurbish more furniture while Clean Up Resource School is in a process of repairing the required number of chairs and desks. We are fixing our own furniture in our region at our resource schools. 51 teachers' tables, 2,760 learners' desks, and 2,400 learners' chairs were procured from government stores and distributed to schools. Now, hear what I'm saying. With these efforts, hear what I'm saying now. With all these efforts, lack of chairs and desks in schools in Hatab region is something of the past. <laughs> all 57 state schools are provided with permanent structures, water, electricity, and access to internet. Wow. 5,838 community members were trained by Lifelong Learning Division on various skills such as goat farming, poultry, and gardening in all eight constituencies. And to improve government school hostels administration, all 20 government schools hostels were fully gated and supplied with 385 double banger beds, 1,020 matrazes, 1,490 dining benches, and 1,150 single door loggers were supplied by the education to hostels. That's very little. Can't we make it better? <laughs> Let's now move over to information and communication technology. Hartabians, 
The MICT team ensured that accurate information was shared with the hard up community and beyond by working together with decentralized functions and relevant institutions responsible for national development and social programs. The regional office publishes a quarterly online newsletter titled Hardtap MI City Update. The publication is geared towards keeping the Hardtap inhabitants informed on key developmental issues in the region as well as activities that the regional offices are undertaking quarterly. The MI City regional office has produced more than 40 news stories focusing on developmental and current affairs for NBC News main news bulletin segment. Inhabitants of Hartab region, if you have appreciated that part of MICT, allow me now to please move over to gender equality, poverty eradication, and social welfare. A total of 24,172 beneficiaries come natively have been registered and are receiving social grants. This is an increase of 1,348 beneficiaries during the period under review. Some numbers have added to getting some dollars in order to survive days in Harta region. I believe they must get a round of applause. <laughs> Maintenance grants, 3,159. Foster care grant, 599, special maintenance grant, 254, vulnerable grant, 8,049, old age grant, 9,170, and disability grant, 2,941. I'm now moving over to community with focus on poverty eradication under the same ministry. The directorate responsible for, responsible for early childhood development reported that 46 ECD centers were provided with subsidies and 56 centers with teaching and learning materials. Moreover, 1,958 children are enrolled at ECD centers in the region. 96, 96 educators out of 156 received a monthly allowance Further, water tanks have been installed at all 15 ECD centers. Income generating activities, equipment, and material were handed over to five beneficiaries in four constituencies Hibion, Mariendal Rural, Aronos, and Riebov. For the amount of 90,000 Namibian dollars, shall we put our hands together? Every little counts. Every big achievement starts with small steps. Honorable Chairperson, say, Hartab Regional Facility is waiting to be reported on. Please allow me to continue. Thank you. The facility during the year under review admitted 237 offenders and released 321 offenders. Currently, there are 690 inmates of which 14 are females and 676 are males. Without any trial awaiting or juvenile offenders, the facility offers training in different programs for reintegration into the society. These programs are thinking and loving skills. 20 offenders participated and have completed it. Managing my substance use, 10 offenders participated and 9 completed it. Motivating offenders to rethink everything, 18 offenders completed it. And gender-based violence offenders were 6, and they have completed all 6 of them that training. In addition, the facility offers practical skills training to the inmates such as bricklaying, plastering, five offenders participated, a motor mechanic for offenders, other educational programs offered, offered are adult literacy, 37 offenders, adult upper primary education, 32 offenders, these are people participating, né? secondary NAMCOL grade 12, 
13 offenders, and we've got people out here, they are not enrolled at Namkol. And tertiary education, four offenders studying at universities, they're enrolled. <laughs> On food production, I am pleased, in fact, I'm both euphoric and interrupted. I'm pleased to report that Hardtap Correctional Facility continues to be the flagship in producing food for its own consumption and supply to other correctional facilities. <laughs> that, that facility is in Hardtap and it deserves a better round of applause. In general, the facility produced 40.700 kilogram vegetables and 3.64 bales of lucerne and 2.213 piglets, small pigs, were born. They continue to supply, and the hardtap governor's office also, at times, are benefiting from the spin offs of that hard work. <laughs> office, not the governor, eh? Inhabitants of the Hardtap region, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Namibians, initiatives from the office of the regional and Kavada, and I think you know him by now. Nay. Before I conclude, Mr. Chairperson, say, the governor has been preoccupied with pro poor initiatives to support the most vulnerable and destitute members of the societies. This is despite economic headwinds and minimal budget availed to the office of the governor. The initiatives are as follows. The office of the governor with the assistance of IBF fishing prime minister, Mr. P. A. Schmidt and Mr. Shitora and his wife made resources available to construct a house for a centenarian, the eldest in Daveb constituency, and last year, November. <laughs> Governor's Kitchen is an active initiative of bringing a meal a day to the constituencies around the region on rotational basis. I think I must pause probably it's below, let me just continue. Equally, the Office of the Governor provided financial support for students to undertake studies at various vocational institutions, but please don't come to the Governor's office, ne? Ten nursing students pursuing nursing studies at the expert, they are now in their final year, they will be studying next year to earn some income. Two students at Okongo Vocational Training School in the field of tailoring to join the 12 women that were trained here so that we can start our own fabric, tailoring fabric in the region. Two students at Ongula VTC uh, in tourism and other stuff, and eight students in the field of hospitality and tourism at NWR, Namibia Wildlife Resort. Five students graduated from Kayak last year in Ondangwa and were provided with startup kits received support of 50 wheelchairs from a Rani group of companies, whereby 21 were distributed to people living with disabilities in the region. <laughs> now, the governor's kitchen I referred to earlier is supported by NAMEP Mills, Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources, and farmers meet market on a monthly basis to provide food items and or puzzles and sometimes just a meal to the people whom we identify advance of time, ahead of time rather, in order for them to benefit. I would like to pause a little bit. Don't rush with me, technicians, please. Uh, besides these heavyweights I've mentioned, some people are benefiting through the regional office with tenders, small and big, medium. 
In that respect, I would like to appreciate Sarah's investment, Sky High investment, and other individuals for same purpose of helping the hunger to survive starvation in this region. They have really contributed and are assisting us to serve the people out there. So let's put our hands together for them. This is really a commendable undertaking from the cooperative entities. Other companies are called upon to emulate this good example. And if other local authorities are receiving assistance in this respect, when you submit for SORA, let these things be reflected so that we do not underappreciate those that are helping us to serve our people. Next round, please. As an effort to promote arts and culture, which is prominent in the region, the Office of the Governor hosted a festival in April 2022, which was known as Easter Candigals for Choirs and Instrumentalists. We are a singing and a culture celebrating region, so we just have to do that. Office of, Office of the Governor and Ambassador Margaret Mensah Williams in cooperation with Dr. Zara Vaksori, constructed a, a, a community center and a community hall. It's one and the same thing at South Puts in Hibion constituency at the value of 180,000 Namibian dollars. I think we need to put hands together. This is a big thing. Uh, we need to really appreciate somebody sitting in the USA trying to help our people in Namibia at a place like South Perth. It's a giant undertaking. Thank you so much, Dr. Zara Voksori, your husband, and everybody that is assisting South Perth. There are still programs happening. We are going to report on those in the next financial year. To be fully democratic, effective, and efficient in its delivery of services, the regional and local government in the region requires support in the following areas. We need support, continuous strengthening of capacity, building of personnel and issues of expected standards across all sectors, and customer-focused public service delivery to enable citizens to express trust, experience, transparency, and root out corruption. I'm hearing corruption also around here, small scale. We need to be capacitated to, if it's happening unwittingly, to get rid of that corruption. If the governor is involved, the governor must get rid of the corruption. It's a disease. <laughs> Support to both farmers and ordinary citizens to mitigate acute vulnerability to climate change, that is water conservation, and resilience adapting agriculture methods adaptable to low rainfalls or flooding. Establishment of best practices to mobilize communities to combat social evils such as theft, domestic violence, possession of drugs and substance, illegal hunting and fishing projects in the pipeline now at the following for Harta region. But when I get to that, let me be a little bit smart. Let me portray myself to be a little bit smart by taking a citation from Muhammad Gandhi, who is encouraging us that heroes are made in the hour of defeat. Success is therefore well described as a series of glorious defeats, quotation claims. The region remains committed to preserve and achieve more with what is available in the following projects. We remain committed to achieve more, and the projects are as follows. The official inauguration of the fully-fledged VTC at Kaitana Hub is anticipated to open soon and ultimately the commencement of operations to train students. And if this thing starts, we as the region demands 90% of Hardab region inhabitants to benefit from that sender. No compromise. 
We are not compromising 90% hardtop region. Once again, this facility will afford the region an opportunity to capacitate the youth who have skills and knowledge for the job markets. Establishment of resource school is happening for children who have severe disabilities in Mariental, which will later cater for the same group of citizens in Hartab and Karas regions. Gone are the days for us to take our kids to Vanduk. We want them here in Hartab region. Emergency construction of 24 classrooms by AUKUS 26 Construction Company is currently ongoing in Hartab region. Four classrooms at Embleham Senior Secondary School, four classrooms at Stambridge Combined School, and 16 classrooms as part of phase one of constructing a new secondary school in Rehoboth Block H. <laughs> secondary school. I feel so elated. I feel like flying. And that hand clap is not <laughs> responsive. The discovery and investment in green, in green hydrogen and oil discovered in Lutrets is finally becoming a reality. At the moment, the regional leadership under the auspices of government and private sector investors are positioning youth groups through registration of companies and training in line with the spin-offs and the core functions that will happen when these two, the oil and hydrogen, are starting to happen for real in the neighboring region. I want to call upon you as Hardtap Region Leadership to not sit and wait. There is no help for those that sit and wait for help. Go to the constitutional constituency offices, go to governor's offices, go to local authority offices, and get to be given a correct advice for us to benefit. We don't want to lag behind in these possible opportunities. The livestock support program will be extended to drought stricken regions. Good news for you. Maika Mabaji will be extended to drought stricken regions including Hardab region, starting 1st July to 31st December, this Thursday, this Thursday, for the first time, the Ministry of Prime Minister's Office will come and see the Hardab regional leadership to talk about the content of this drought relief. Those people who have started writing names already, thank you for that job, but we have not yet started in our region only after Thursday. A call is made to all the farmers to adopt a more proactive than a reactive response towards the impact of climate change. Hence, the ministry is rolling out the livestock emergency guidelines and standards in the region. This is a set of international standards and guidelines for designing, implementation, and evaluating interventions to assist livestock owning communities that are affected by humanitarian crises. Milk value chain development is a new scheme, valued at two million, which will be implemented in 2023-2024 financial year. The main objective of the scheme is to support modern and self-sustaining dairy industry to meet the country's need in milk and dairy products. We are going to be milk eating, drinking and cheese eating nation very soon. Eh? <laughs> Construction of social houses in Wakanas is ongoing. Gohas Aronos and Stambrit planned to adopt low-cost housing for low 
ultra low income groups Khibun <laughs> village council is planning to create 400 ervan that must and will be developed in stages Kalkran village council is planning to construct an early childhood recreational area to the value of 135,000 additionally developing, developing tourism support stalls to the value of 65,000 Namibian dollars. Carl Grant is on the move. <laughs> Extension of the existing oxidation ponds is proposed for the next financial year with a budget allocation of 946000 in Wakhanas settlement by the Hartab Regional Council. Are they not deserving a hand? <laughs> Further, a solar energy plant is nearly completed at Wakhanas to supply or at least bring a balanced costing in terms of affordability of electricity for the settlement. <laughs> Private sector, Goha's village council plans to upgrade the existing boreholes, upgrade the sports field, and improve the community hall as well as convert an underutilized building to a multi-purpose youth center that is in Gorkhas. They deserve <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, dear Namibians, Hartab region inhabitants, those of you that are online, we thank you so very much for your kind attention. May we continue to collect bricks to build a better Namib Namibia for all of us. This Namibia is the only one we have. And therefore, it is our collective responsibility to collectively develop this country. Developing this region, this country, will not happen overnight. It's an ongoing job. I therefore invite you, come closer. Let's build our nation. I thank you, babe. This is the only Namibia we have indeed. There you have it, the State of the Region Address, the 2023 State of the Region Address by Governor and so Reverend Solomon April here in Marintel Accounting for the State of Affairs in the Hardab Region. Quite a comprehensive 16-page uh, address there, just 
going over various sectors within the region. Of course, you also highlighted those five key uh, thematic areas of youth unemployment, drought, uh, opportunities for young people, as well as unity and land distribution. I'm still here with Simon Matthias from the Swapo Party's Youth League. She's the Information uh, Secretary of Mobilization and, and did I get that right? Information, publicity, and mobilization. Yes. yes. <laughs> Quite a mouthful. <laughs> Simon, thank you for being with us still. First and foremost, what did you make of that very comprehensive uh, State of the Region address here? Well, I think all of my expectations were met. Uh, previously, I did mention that uh, development and implementation. And from the report that we have seen, implement implementation yeah. is being met. Uh, I'm actually very very happy to hear that the shortage of chairs in schools are no longer there uh, the health sector is getting the extension and the upgrading that it needs um, yeah i believe that should be it's quite quite yes. a bit and i think the governor preempted or you know just answered your question you know pertaining to our earlier conversation about that vtc center at uh, k ganahas uh, is saying that it is about to be completed it is practically completed and of course we'll train some 300 uh, young people just firstly what do you make of this development and looking at that figure 300 how much potential lies um, therein, especially as far as vocational education is concerned? Yeah. First of all, I believe my governor, uh, he heard you. <laughs> our governor, <laughs> deserves a, a huge hand of applause mm -hmm. and uh, a very, very appreciative youth sitting right here. Yeah. 300 uh, youth um, upgrading skills. I believe we would then have to go a step further as youth in yes. seeing that we are serious about. Uh, curbing the unemployment rate in yeah. our region mm -hmm. and then go a step further into getting investors to come back into our region to find uh, to see opportunities because you'll so have 300 youths that can do almost anything yeah. from motor mechanics to carpentry and yeah. so forth exactly. so investors please come <laughs> come and the invest skills in us are the skills will be available <laughs> yes very much of course, there's also a lot you know said on education a lot achieved uh, you know, under education, even if you look at, you know, the number of, of learners who've qualified now for AS level, 15.6% uh, uh, growing from an initial 9%. Um, what do you make of the state of education? You know, there's a lot said, um, a lot of money invested in education as well. Are you happy with where things are? Yes, I should say I should. I'm, I'm very, very happy. Uh, I was having a, a very, very big headache last year. <laughs> because of one of our high schools which yeah. ended up in the parliament yeah. and just because of uh, the seriousness we can see the changes that were made our mm -hmm. school ended up in one of the top 10 Imagine of that. the of the, of the country yeah. so i should be very very happy indeed yes. <laughs> <laughs> land issue um 75 percent of uh farmland here in the hard region is commercial land um, of course, we've spoken earlier about, you know, the need for land. Um, Governor briefly touched there, you know, on efforts towards land distribution. Um, are you happy with the contents of, 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 of these efforts? Are you, are you happy with the manner in which perhaps uh, we plan on redistributing land here? Um, yes and no. <laughs> yes, because I'm yeah. happy to hear that there's land available. But yeah. then one, need, the one thing that we need to consider is the accessibility to the land yeah. the criteria of which our people need to apply for land again yeah. is a bit too sharp and um, very strict if we can relax on that uh, it would make it a bit easier for us to access the land because yeah. initially at the end of the day it's land that we want mm -hmm. for ourselves and to develop the agricultural rate and so forth yeah. and the youth are the future of tomorrow so if a youth does not have whatever the requirements are currently, um, then the implementation process would we'll still be. Quite tricky. Uh, yes, yeah. yes. Of course, we also learned that there are some 94 resettlement farms um, available, and efforts will be made towards you know availing those farms um, to, of course, the various people in need. I'm just taking a look at you know the the concept of resettlement farms. Do you think it has it has worked or it is working here in the Hardlop region? Yes, of course, it mm -hmm. is working. Um, yeah. 
The reason being, he, our governor also just mentioned that we are going into a milk and butter, yes. but, uh, butter region. Um, the, the, the extent of the meat supplies and the milk and the butter, yeah. I mean, it should be a result of the 94 reforms <laughs> that we have received. Very much. Yes. The issue of safety and security, um, one very alarming issue, of course. We learned that there were some 4,700 cases um, reported in the region over the past year. Um, some 2,000 of those cases um, account for Rehoboth alone. Um, you come from Rehoboth. Mm. Crime, we spoke about this earlier, is very high. Um, at this particular point in time, hearing those figures, you know, Rehoboth accounting for some 2,000 or 4,000 reported cases, um, what do you make of that? It is quite sad. Um, it's not something that we want to hear about. Uh, what I would like, this is a plea to our community because I know our community has a, a, a lack of working together with um, the, the, the law enforcers. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I know of a group called Rehoboth Community uh, Program whereby they work hand in hand mm -hmm. with the um, serious crime units yeah. or the law enforcement. Mm -hmm. If we have more of these groups, and it is possible because we have Old Mutual yeah. that sponsors this type of um, community, uh, what do you call it? Okay? Community Initiative prevention. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. community crime prevention groups. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Old Mutual has a program whereby they sponsor different groups yeah. in order to get the materials that they need. I also know that our station commanders in Rehoboth, they do yeah. not sit back. They go out, they approach the community. Absolutely. And the community as well needs to understand that it is us that makes our town. Mm -hmm. So for us, we have to unfortunately work together with the crime. Absolutely. And if there is a need for us to hold people accountable, especially when it comes to the safety sector, yeah. I believe we will do it. Absolutely. Yes, because for them also, yeah. yeah, it's a hand in hand. It goes both ways. Very much. Yes. All and in all, yeah, sorry. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. uh, what we need to take into consideration is Rehoboth makes up 50 plus percent of Hardlop. Of Hardlop. Mm -hmm. So we are a very big, vast yes. uh, community. Yeah. Yes. Very much. So we should uh, push, direct more resources, more efforts. Um, especially to those particularly uh, populated areas. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, Simon, just as we conclude our conversation this morning, all, all in all, are you pleased, you know, uh, with the state of affairs here in the region as per the governor? Do you feel that there was anything that was perhaps um, not properly underscored, um, something that could perhaps be shed uh, more light on perhaps? Uh, do you feel that, you know, there are certain areas perhaps that the governor's speech was lacking in? I would just like to draw attention uh, to, in, in, in Rehoboth, yeah. personally, because I come from it, we have more than, I think, 20 plus, uh, 20,000 plus homesteads that needs to be, to get ownership. Yes. Uh, our local, I'm calling on our local authorities mm -hmm. to ensure that this happens because one of the reasons why we have so much land issues in Hartab region yep. is because we don't have people that can call a house a piece of land yes. their own. Yes. So if we can ensure that that happens in our towns, yep. especially Rehoboth, then I believe uh, we would make Hartab a very, very better program. Yep. And yes, um, like I said before, I'm very, very happy with what the <laughs> governor has reported. Very much. Yes, yeah. so, so much. You're in the political space yourself, and it was nice to hear the governor, you know, from the onset of his speech, you know, his address, already comment, you know, the cooperation um, amongst the region, amongst council members, amongst councillors, etc. Um, just lastly, as we part ways, uh, what do you make of the political landscape once we know there was a major shift uh, in dynamics? Um, since the last, you know, regional and local authority elections. But from where is, you know, cooperation, as far as cooperation goes, uh, are you pleased with where things stand here? I should say I'm very pleased because mm. if there was no cooperation, then all this that was said in the Sora today would not be possible. And... Um, <laughs> it's a bit of a sensitive topic to touch, but then, yeah, yeah. Uh, no uh, uh, development ways. Yeah, yeah, it is very, it is there. The contra the the, yeah. the the working together. Very much. Very yes, much. it is there. Simon, it's a pleasure. 
uh, after today's conversation and uh, today's address, I might consider moving to the Hardab region. Thank you for being with us and all the best to you. Yeah. Thank you, thank yeah. you. But start in Riyamoth then. You start in Riyamoth. <laughs> start in Riyamoth and move your way down, yeah. <laughs> There you have Thank it, you so that's Saima Matias. She is the Regional Secretary for Information, Publicity and Mobilization of the Swapo Party Youth League, taking us through the state of affairs here in the Hardab region as we just observed Governor uh, Solomon April, Reverend Solomon April, deliver the 2023 State of the Region address, that being his fourth address since coming into the position in 2020. And of course, as according to him, uh, the state of affairs are fairly well and the Hardab house is fairly intact. Of course, do catch us uh, this Wednesday, the 5th of July, as we will be in Khobabas in the Omaheke region, uh, preparing for, that is, Governor Pio Nganate to take his state of the region address uh, to the nation. That is at 9.45 on Wednesday as we bring you another state of the region address. Until then, from myself, Fundi Shishia Mfungu, and the team, thank you so much for tuning in. We wish you a safe and pleasant as well as productive day. Thank you.